Today's project is a little kit from the usual sources and it's the LM1875T. Now this isn't a new chip from by any stretch of the imagination. It's been around since 2011. It's actually a pretty good chip. It produces about 20 watts per channel or a little bit more into 4 ohms. Now I don't want to give away what I've found on this but it's worth watching till the end of the video because there's a few surprises in store. So let's get on with the tests. It's on the bench now and we're connected to a positive and negative supply of 25 volts. This shows the quiescent conditions. There's no signal going in at present and it's consuming half a watt of power from both supplies. This is the negative supply and this is the positive supply. Now the first test I'm going to do is to um, power it up and see the maximum power that we can get done in my usual way just prior to clipping with one kilohertz going in and there is only one channel because it's mono I haven't built the other one yet so we'll see what power we get now bearing in mind this is a stabilized supply so the power will remain at 25 volts no matter how much power I draw and if you obviously if you built this using a standard analog supply for want of a better word you may well start off with 25 volts but that will sag down to 22 23 depending on the power supply you build so obviously you will not get the maximum power under those conditions so whatever we measure now is with a stabilized supply of 25 volts now clearly this little heat sink is not going to provide adequate cooling um, probably on music it might be okay but I'm going to use this little fan because I don't really want it to go bang I'm sure that's going to be adequate for the job in question. Right, we're going to wind up the input now until we just are below clip. And that's there. And we're looking at the 30 volt scale, which is this one, which means we've got 14 volts RMS. 14 volts times 14 volts equals divided by 8 because we've got an 8 ohm load that's 24.5 watts well I started to do the same test into 4 ohms and it doesn't like 4 ohms look it starts to do some horrible things I'm going to reduce the voltage down to 20 volts and see if it's happier. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. So it doesn't like, there's the maximum power and we've got nine volts. Yes, 20 watts doesn't really like four ohms well we have a bit of a dilemma now the rating of this amplifier if you look at the official specifications is 20 watts into four ohms and 25 watts into eight ohm so clearly it has a bit of an issue with lower impedances it says that's both with 25 volts and you can operate it at up to plus or minus 30 volts which 
Hmm. What I'm going to do is, I, I suspect, you'll be surprised to hear this, but we may well have a fake chip. And I know, I know what you're saying. You find that so hard to believe, but I think it could be the case. So I'm going to pause the video here now and pop down to JCAR and purchase a proper one. And the one that I've still got to build here, which, which I've actually built, but I haven't put the chip on it yet. So I'm going to pop out now and buy a proper chip, put that on there and see if it makes any difference. And if I find that the chip is fake, I should be looking for a refund. Well, I've returned from shopping at JCAR and here we have a fake, maybe, and here we have the genuine, maybe. You can see they do look different. This one, the supposedly good one, has just got a little round circle etched into it and the fake maybe has the sides beveled. Again from the rear they do look noticeably different. Now sadly the fakes don't always come with a red or well, in this case a black blob on them but that's just so if I drop them on the floor or can't remember which one's which this one is the one that came with the kit. If only all the fakes came with a blob of some colour on there, that would make life easier, wouldn't it? Even the leads have a different pitch, slightly, to the potentially good one. Anyway, that's enough waffle. I'm going to assemble this good one into the board and we'll see if there's any difference at all. I have exactly the same setup that I did for the original chip except I've mounted it on a bigger heat sink purely so I don't have to have a fan running on it. Other than that the setup is the same. I've got a couple of extra capacitors here purely because my leads are a couple of feet long. In reality I don't think it's going to make any difference but I wanted the test to be identical to the previous tests. The first thing we notice is that the quiescent current is now 30 milliamps and instead of 20 milliamps and the conditions are otherwise the same. Voltage is the same, 25 volts plus and minus. Right, we have our 8 ohm load connected and you can see on the scope we're actually running this at 100 hertz and the reason for doing that is because um, when I did the previous tests on the original chip, I also had it set to 100 hertz, not 1 kilohertz, as I said. So to keep things similar, it won't make any difference in reality. Um, I've already checked this and the power is the same at 100 ohms, <laughs> at 100 hertz as it is at 1 kilohertz. So we'll wind up the power now, look at the top of the waveform, and... There's clipping there, there. So we take it down to there. If we look at the meter on this scale, we have 15 volts. Now, according to my Olivetti meter, that gives us 28.1, well, call it 13 watts, which is already 4 watts more than the previous chip under exactly the same circumstances. So we'll do the same test now into 4 ohms. So there we have clean power. And the heat sink's getting really toasty. Let's look at the power. We've got 12 volts into 4 ohms. 12 volts into 4 ohms gives 36 watts which is a bit of an improvement from the previous which gave us 19 watts so I think we can categorically say that the 
chips supplied with the kit are fake. This is our square wave at one kilohertz. It really is one kilohertz now, not 100. And as you can see, it's pretty respectable. Let's um, open it up a bit. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. This is 10 kilohertz. Again, as I've mentioned before, excuse all the muck on here. It's coming from some, something in this room and I don't know what it is because even if I leave the scope unconnected, I get that and it's definitely not coming from the amplifier itself. I don't propose to spend hours going through graphs and things. I should give you some figures shortly, but we'll just go up a little bit to 20 kilohertz and see what the square wave looks like. And there we are, 20 kilohertz. Not bad, not bad at all. In fact, it puts the waveforms of the quad, which I'd previously tested, to shame. Um, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, but it, it really does. Here we are looking at a sine wave, obviously, and I just wanted you to see how clean it looks. There's no crossover artifacts or anything nasty. Um, and But that corresponds to 100 milliwatts output, but at 50 kilohertz, can you believe? Pretty impressive by any standards. I think we can categorically say without any fear of contradiction that the chips supplied with the original kits are fakes, faulty, not good. The kits themselves were very easy to put together and all the components other than the chips, which is sad because that's the main part of it, are fine. Pin printed circuit board has good earthing planes and um, it, it, it's, it's good. One of the kits were missing 215 picofarad. Was it 15? I can't remember, but we're missing two small ceramic capacitors. Should you buy it? Well, if you buy it and use it as is, it's sort of okay into 8 ohms and you get a, a reasonable power. But bearing in mind that if you buy the, a genuine chip, and this should be the giveaway, you can expect to pay about 11 New Zealand dollars per chip, which is more than the price of the kit. But that's the price you pay uh, if you want something genuine, which is actually a pretty good amplifier. I have to say, it, it really does sound good. And if, if you want a, a 25 watt or more into four ohms, um, then this, this is a pretty good little kit, even if you throw the chip away and um, you couldn't make the printed circuit board or buy the extra components for what you pay. So I guess that's what you have to consider. Buy the kits, throw the chip away and go to your to a proper electronic distributor, RS components, um, Farnell or other ones which are probably more prominent to you in your country. And you do get a very nice little amplifier. But these are the figures on the proper chip. Half dB down, okay, 10 hertz, and on the high side, 55 kilohertz. But if you want to really slum it and have 1 dB down, pretty dreadful, 7 hertz and 105 kilohertz. So not not a bad spec, I think you'll agree. The low end, of course, does have a, a one microfarad capacitor on the input electrolytic. And you could argue that you'd be better off replacing that with a polyester or something like that. But, and if you put the um, component to a, a 2.2 microfarad, you will go down even lower. But in all honesty, um, 
10 hertz, half a dB down. It's not tacky, is it? I mean, it would shame many valve, well, all, am all valve amplifiers. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it. It is what it is. And for what you pay, even if you go out and purchase two proper genuine chips, you'll have a very nice 25 watt into eight or 35 watts into four. Not tacky by any means.